now it's time to get our hands dirty. A new study to uncover the secrets of microbiomes in the soil may enable farmers to reduce costs and increase harvest. According to Professor Karen Jacobs, they play an important role in the production of food. Now, the study is going to run until 2021. It'll involve experts and students from several higher learning institutions. And uh, Professor uh, joins us now. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. It's all about smart farming. Please tell me what smart farming actually is. <laughs> thank you for the invitation. Um, smart farming, um, in, in our definition, is basically understanding how the plant interacts with its environment um, and the effect that human practices and how we how we interact with our uh, environment has an effect on how much food we'll have uh, one day um, actually today I mean food security is such an important issue um, we're, we, we have a finite piece of soil that we can use to cultivate our crops it's about 12% of it's very little it's very I was little. surprised I when I read about, that we calculated about free state and how ting is the, the area that we have to cultivate food for this country we know our population is rising but that is that is going to be that that is what we have, um, but it's also decreasing because of desalination. Of salination. I mean, the soils are getting degraded, um, and that's where we're trying to understand how we can farm in a more sustainable manner, which is why we call them smart farming, um, to increase not necessarily the yields but reduce inputs and maintain our yields at least. It certainly sounds like the holy grail for every farmer to spend less money, uh, increase your yield. Increase increase your food security. I mean, surely that's what every farmer everywhere has always been trying to do. What innovations are you looking at? I understand the project's been underway for about a year now. So, yes, our project has been underway for a year now, um, but I have to give credit here. There's already farmers in South Africa that is taking this on board, and that's been doing this for more than 10 years, and they've been very effective. And it requires a farmer to become an ecologist more than just somebody who puts stuff on the soil and takes stuff from the soil. Mm -hmm. So um, some of these farmers really has got down to an art form and how to reduce their impacts, how to sustainably farm. You know, they, they bring animals onto it, cover crops, intercropping, just to reduce that chemical input that they have. Um, and we're learning from these farmers every day. So, but what we'd like to do is add that other piece of puzzle is that black box of understanding how the microorganisms in soil contribute to that. Can um, I stop you there? Yes, what yes. is a microbiome in soil? Because <laughs> so, I'm not sure. Yes, so many people know about the microbiome on a human body. You know, these are the organisms that protect you, that, that help you um, uh, take up nutrients. In soil, they serve the same action. If you think about soil as a big organ, as a big organism, um, these are these organisms form the gut. So what they do is they sit around the root of a plant and they will get nutrients in for the plant. But not just that, they will stimulate growth of your plant if you have the right combination of microorganisms. And one of the most important things that we find is that the more diverse that community of organisms is, the more resilient your soil is. So what depletes yeah. those microbiomes? So what depletes those microbiomes is when you have, it's for instance, when you would be on a solid diet of McDonald's, no pun intended, but <laughs> for forever. Mm. And you try and supplement with vitamins. It's not healthy, it's not sustainable. Mm. And this is the same. So if you have a single crop over multiple years and just taking off your mm. crop every year, you're not adding anything. But isn't that something farmers have been doing for centuries? Sort of rotating not crops. Oh no, not necessarily. So what we're trying, uh, so what we're actually feeding into is this is not a new concept. Mm -hmm. This is something that the Aztecs employed when mm -hmm. they did farming. They had what they called the three sisters, which was the maize, uh, maize, lupins, and butternuts. And these things grow together on one piece of land and f perform different functions. So. Um, it's not a new concept, it's just a concept that's now coming forward and now we have the tools to measure and manage our microorganisms which is vital to this piece of puzzle. Uh, because the microorganisms, would, they are the ones that make the nutrients available to the, uh, to the plants, they're the ones that um, boost the plant growth. And very important what we found is that if you have these resilient, diverse community of organisms, um, your plants are better protected. So in field trials that's been done in the Western Cape, we've seen that in drought conditions, if you have fields that has what we call conservation farming on them, um, <clears throat> the yields would be the same in drought years as it was in previous years. Whereas with the, con the commercial type or the conventional type farming, those yields would drop. How much buy-in is there? I mean, we're seeing that our water management, our drought management has been less than ideal, and I think that's something of an understatement. So how much sort of national buy-in is there to, to change the way we farm where, where needed? 
it's it's actually it's, it's it's a whole movement, a whole way of thinking that's that's gaining traction. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular project is funded by the NRF, which is a national foundation for research. Uh, the money comes from the Department of Science and Innovation, and it's managed through the Foundational Biodiversity Information Program. Um, so it's, it's national buy-in, but not just that. The farmers on the ground itself have these uh, cooperatives, they have these discussion groups where they're trying to learn more and more about this. There are two very large con conferences every year looking at this particular type of farming where we also have an input and we share our, our knowledge and our findings with, these, um, uh, with the farming communities. Um, but, I'm, uh, you know, the buy-in and, and the taking on board and how people try and understand this thing is absolutely fantastic to see. Anything that I can apply to my veggie patch immediately? <laughs> <laughs> Have a, a wide variety of different plants that would that would be a good start and keep your how did one farmer tell me keep your, your soils green through, uh, throughout the year. Okay, fantastic. Tell us about the next phase of the project. It's been a year now? So it's been a year now, so we have a couple of universities involved in this. There's a couple of students. Um, the, one of the big outcomes of this project is to document biodiversity. That's one of the biggest outcomes. So I have a lot of students who's culturing fungi and bacteria in the soil, and they are evaluating these organisms for useful properties. So can we use them? Can we put them into a little bottle and put them back? Not sure if that's going to work, but let's see what they do. And just trying to understand what this complex group of organisms does. And maybe just leave you with a very interesting little bit of nugget or nugget of information is that in every gram of soil you have more than 10 billion bacterial cells. Mark. So, And they all work towards doing something in the soil.